Sarah asks, are there any considerations with using numbers and special characters in team names, SharePoint site names, and associated connected notebook names? Any gotchas? Yes. Some are reserved characters. <laughs> I think a lot of people don't think about their naming conventions, and it's really important that you think about the naming conventions. You know, using underscores or dashes, fine. But when you start to get into special characters, it's so much harder to find things. And then people will recreate a, a team or a ship one because they can't find something. So then you end up with some duplication going on. Uh, keeping it really simple and in terms of characters is going to be really important. Um, plus less than 30 character length. You know, when it comes to a team um, name and channels, we want to try and limit it down. So uh, where those naming conventions, it's always easier if you go, this is a project type channel or it's an organizational, my ORG underscore, so that people can run down and they really only see the first 11 characters as well, 11 to 12 characters in um, in a team. So you need to be really succinct so people can find it as they're running their eye down. And I know that we can use emojis and get those, you know, iconography in there. I wouldn't do it personally on a team. A channel, great, because um, it really will help you on a channel. You know, we have a 76% better recall if we've got a picture um, and it will help people with reading, especially those with accessibility um, issues so and dyslexia. So having uh, a picture at the front of a channel, great. You can just do your Windows period or full stop key, whatever you prefer to call it, and bring those characters uh, emojis up to do those naming. But I wouldn't do it with SharePoint sites. I wouldn't do it with creating a team. All those sorts of things come into play. Um, Heather, thoughts? Oh, yes, I've got lots of thoughts. <laughs> yeah, no, let's, let's discuss it. <laughs> yes, we figured some stuff out in the last uh, several months that um, let's say that your team name is like two zero period zero zero oh, and then two yep. zero period zero zero one. But there's, also, there's also a name in there. No, there's a name in there. So there might be okay, like got, yep. strategy or something like that. There's a name oh, yeah, for yeah, each yeah, of yeah. these yeah. functional teams right whatever it might be um what we found though is is that works fine for the team that works fine for the associated sharepoint site name but for the one note notebook oh, yes when you're Word. looking at it in like the recent so if you're on the microsoft 365 homepage and you're looking at your recent files if one of those notebooks is listed there that notebook name would just be 20 because that period ends up being like a hard stop and it doesn't yep. read the rest of it. So then if you have a lot of these teams like that, then you end up with notebooks that are 20, 21, 22, and that doesn't contextually tell you what it is. Then what you have to do is you have to go into the SharePoint site, into the site assets where that notebook lives and change that to something like an underscore, and then the full name will come through. Um, so that was one of the challenges. The other challenge we found with the OneNote notebooks was if you kept the period or periods in the name and you needed to change that name later on, it wouldn't let you use the period anymore. If you tried to go only, in and change it in only SharePoint. Only net new. Only net new, somehow. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah, so some some because yeah, it doesn't like it in little... its naming convention because what it's doing is it's treating it like it's a the file path name and trying to change it from a you know a reserved OneNote you know, package. Yeah, it's a, as a reserved yeah. character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather yeah, than yeah. yeah. Mm. And you can't use ampersands instead of the word and. No, you can't. So, so there's there, and it'll tell right. you right out of the gate can't use that kind of a character. So yeah, there was definitely some uh, interesting things, and Planner didn't seem to have a problem with it as much. I think I think earlier on there was something that we noticed with that too. But yeah, definitely some things to consider before you go down that road too far. So something. So when you're yeah keeping it simple and thinking about. I think in this example too, of your naming conventions to make sure that maybe you can do it in one application, but not in another, you want them to be consistent so they can be used anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Something that I like is case sensitivity in your naming um, mm -hmm. because in like some coding standards, some people do it, uh, you know, it is, you know, mm -hmm. every new word is the, the first letter letters capitalized, everything else, this other letters are, are, are lowercase so that you can, have less space, tighten it, um, but you can easily read the naming um, because you know each word has the first letter capitalized. Um, so that's just you can have more complex naming, uh, yeah. but 
following that method rather than have it all lowercase, all 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 caps. Wow, it's just infuriating to try and read that <laughs> stuff. One of the, so, um, go ahead. Uh, uh, what I was going to say, what I'm hoping is that at some point we will have a way to sort our teams. And mm. that when you're using these types of things, if you're using numbers or you're starting at, like you said, Kirsty, like ORG, that there would be a way for us to not have to drag and drop to get them in the order that we want, that you could say, like, put these in ascending or descending order or some sort of an order. I've seen those requests out on the feedback portal, but uh, nothing yet, unless you guys know something. <laughs> well, one of the things you have to also consider is that um, the applications are cross-platform. Um, so a uh, Linux has different rules around uh, file yes. namings, um, and even inside of the Office apps, uh, there are restrictions on what you can call name documents and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, Mac, Mac is the same way because Mac is basically Darwin, which is Linux. Um, <laughs> so it's it's a matter of you know you they have to try and find a happy medium. Um, you know, illegal characters um, in Linux are different than illegal characters in Windows. Um, mm -hmm. Linux doesn't have a 256 character limitation like Windows. You know, there's there's a bunch of differences, and Linux is case sensitive. So yeah. anything you do from a case standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes across over to over to the other operating systems, uh, you have to be very specific about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, go ahead, Kirsty. <laughs> and I was going to say um, the use of spaces as well. It can be an important component for readability. Mm -hmm. You know, when they're all kind of jammed well, together, or at least yeah. having underscores or something. But you know, yeah. you have a space. It's going to give you a percentage sign in SharePoint, and all these things can get a little confusing sometimes with people. Well, now we're so, now we're now we're going to get into the global argument of spaces versus tabs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> what I what I found from a consist, consistent heat, consistency perspective back to when we were creating these teams was working with team templates. So by using those, we had consistency with the names and the spaces for the teams and the channels. The only thing that had to be added in were those numbers that were coming in at the beginning when using those templates. So I really, really found those useful. I don't know if any of you have used those team templates that you can create in the admin center. I don't like teams that much. Sorry. <laughs> I have. You're yeah. more of a Yammer guy, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Telephony all the way. Let's go. Yeah, I'm just another one of those. Yeah. <laughs>